Hey guys, this is Mr. Decker here. This is our first programming lesson on code.org. This is unit two, lesson two, intro to HTML. HTML is the web development programming language we will be using throughout this entire unit. Our programming, or sorry, our computer science standard for this lesson is decompose or break down problems into smaller manageable subproblems to facilitate the program development process. The essential question for this lesson is how can we tell the computer both what to put on the web page and how to organize it? This entire lesson is on code.org. There's no uh, activity guide to fill out, no worksheets, just programming. Make sure you are signed in on code.org with your school Google account. Your grade for this lesson will be based on your programming in the lesson on code.org. Watching the video is mandatory. So watching this video that you're watching right now, you will watch it as you work your way through the lesson on code.org. The best practice is to watch me do a step in the video, pause the video, and then complete that step on code.org and repeat until you're finished. So let's head over to code.org by clicking this link. Now let's get signed in. You, when you sign in, you'll sign in like this, continuing with Google, choosing your school account, and then it will put you in there. I'm signing in through my teacher portal over here. To get to the correct spot you need to go, find your section, which is CSD 1 6th grade, and your current unit, and click on your current unit, CSD Unit 2 Web Development. And then you'll navigate to the correct lesson, which for this is Lesson 2 Intro to HTML, and click on Bubble 1. We already went over the question of the day or the essential question. This lesson introduces HTML as a solution to the problem of how to communicate both the content and structure of a website to a computer. This lesson will have a brief unplugged activity that demonstrates the challenges of effectively communicating the structure of a web page, which we will not be able to do. We'll just have to jump in and do the actual programming portion of this. And we're going to be looking at an HTML page in Web Lab and discuss how HTML tags help solve this problem before using HTML to write our first web pages of the unit. Our vocab for the day, HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, is a language used to create web pages. An HTML element is a piece of a website marked by a start tag and often closed with an end tag. An HTML tag is the special set of characters that indicates the start and end of an HTML element and that element's type. The website content is the text and images that you can see on the website. And the website structure is how that content on the website is organized. The code we're going to learn about today is the paragraph tag, the HTML tag, the head tag, doc type tag, and body tags. Let's continue heading over to Bubble 2. On Bubble 2, we see Welcome to Web Lab. The platform you are in is called Web Lab. There are three main parts of the screen in Web Lab. So over here, we have the file space where we can, you know, eventually choose between different pages and different files that we've put into our website. We also have the workspace right here where you'll be typing in your code. And then we have the preview area over here where it shows you what your website looks like as you're working on it. It says, do this. Try typing, some, try typing something in the workspace. So I'm going to type in, I love computer science. I want you to do the same thing. 
And then when I go over here and click refresh and save, I love computer science shows up on my website in my preview area. Let's finish and head over to bubble three. We've got a video to watch. My name is Milani. I'm a curriculum development intern here at Code.org, and I'm also a computer science student at Cascadia College. I always liked the fact that I can make whatever I want with computer science. I've been able to make really cool websites that are about topics I'm really passionate about, and I just really enjoy that there's so many different ways to express myself through such an outlet. Websites are everywhere and they're the primary way many people get their news, keep up with friends' activities, learn new information, and share the details of their lives. Right now, you might be a consumer of websites created by others, but you're about to learn how to be a website creator with the power to make and share something brand new with the entire world. To do this, you'll be using WebLab, a unique tool that allows you to create your own websites with many of the same capabilities as a professional web developer. The instructions section includes directions for the project you're currently working on. When you're ready, you can collapse the instructions and shrink the size. Below the instructions, WebLab has a list of files and images that will appear on the website. Just like a news website has different pages for the front page, the arts and entertainment page, and the science page, your website will eventually have multiple pages based on files stored here. To edit a web page, you'll need to navigate to the right file name that corresponds to that page. Every project starts with a single index.html file, which is the main page of your website. When you click on the index.html file, it pulls up the contents of the file over here in the workspace. The workspace is where you develop your website. You can start by typing anything in the workspace. Let's put a title at the top of our page, followed by a paragraph about our page. As you type, you may see some of your changes appear automatically in the preview area. Some kinds of changes will not appear automatically. If your change doesn't appear immediately, just click the refresh button above the preview area to update the preview. You'll notice that all the content on your web page gets lumped together, which is not what we want. But stay tuned. You'll soon learn ways to better control how your content appears. All right. That was a very good video. It explained quite a bit. I like it. Let's move on. Bubble four, explore HTML. This is a web page written in HTML, the language of the web. You'll learn more about how it works, but first explore it by using the inspector tool. Do this, it says. Click the tip, how do I use the inspector tool on the right to learn how to use the inspector tool. So let's find the tip. It's right here. How do I use the inspector tool? And it says the inspector tool is a great way to learn more about unfamiliar code in WebLab. To turn on the inspector tool, click the inspector off button. Now it says inspector on. You will know that the inspector tool is on because the button will turn white and say inspector on. Once you turn on the inspector tool, you can hover over anything in the preview area and WebLab will highlight the code that is making that part of the page appear. Okay, cool. So like she said, we're on the index.html file, which is the main part of our, or the main page of our website. Let's talk about some of this code up here before we dig into all of this. So you see this doc type, HTML tag up here, and then HTML, and then head. And in the head, you see title exploring HTML, right? But that's not showing up over here. Hmm, why is that? Well, we've got a begin head tag here on line three of our code. We've got an end head tag on line five of our code. The end indicator is this little uh, slash mark right there, the forward slash. So begin head, end head, right? 
generally speaking, for the most part, what you have between the head tags is not going to show up on your actual website. So you want all of your code to be, let me turn my inspector off real quick. You want all of your code to be between the body tags. This is something that all, a lot of my students in the past few years have been really confused about and have continuously gotten wrong. You can't just type your code anywhere you want in the workspace. This code already exists in the workspace. Don't ever backspace it, don't delete it, just leave it alone, right? It's done for you, it's, that's helpful. You want your code to be between the begin body tag and the end body tag so that all of your code that of things that you want to show up on your website actually shows up on your website over here in the preview area. If you typed it outside of those body tags, you would get errors, things would get wonky, things won't go right, your links will be broken, all kinds of problems occur. So keep in mind, always, 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 every single time, your code needs to be between, what is it kids, what is it? Oh, I wish I could hear you, I wish I could have you in the lab. Between the body tags, between the body tags, right? Okay, so inspector is on. So welcome to web lab, it says up here at the top of the preview area, top of the web page. And you can see the code over here on line seven that corresponds with that. They've got a H1 tag or a header tag associated with that that makes it bold and big. And then this is a web page. Is, an, it is carried on with an H2 tag. And again, H2 start tag, H2 end tag, the end ind indicator being that little forward slash. So when you're talking to the computer with your code, you're essentially saying, hey computer, I want a heading size two. I want it to say, this is a web page. And then that's the end of it into the H, uh, heading size two tag, right? And then the computer's like, okay, cool, bro. I'm putting it on the web page for you. You did that correctly. Let's go. And then on line nine down here, we have a paragraph tag, right? Let's get to it. So if I highlight over here in with using the inspector tool, with the inspector tool on, when I highlight a certain area, it highlights the code that corresponds with creating that part of the website. So we've got a paragraph tag here. We've got begin paragraph and end paragraph. This is one of the first pieces of code we're going to learn. It's a code separator, right? It makes sure that what you're typing out between those tags shows up on its, in its own area or on in its own line. So it says, you are looking at an actual web page written in HTML, the language of the web. On the left side, you can see the code used by your computer to create this page, right? Which you do see on line nine of the code over here in the workspace. We've got another H2. So this is the same size heading as this heading. Inspector tool works the same exact way. It's just on a different part of the page because it's coming after this. The computer reads all of the code sequentially, meaning it reads all of the code in order from top to bottom. So up here, you're telling the, the computer on line one and line two, it's like, hey, computer, I'm going to be typing some code out in this workspace, and it's all going to be in the HTML language. And then it's all going to be between this HTML tag and this HTML tag. And then I've got a little header right here, and it begins on line three and ends on line five. And then all of the stuff that I want to exist on my website that will be readable and viewable by my, the people going to my website is going to be between my begin body and my end body tag starting with line six and ending on line 18. 
Now, it doesn't always have to start on line six, and it doesn't always have to end on line 18 with the body tags. It's just uh, coincidental. It's however much code you have in between the two body tags. Beginning body tag, end body tag. Distinct difference being the little forward slash. All right, back to the inspector tool. Use the inspector tool to see what pieces of code are linked to what text is on the web page. Go through it with a partner so you can discuss what you're seeing. Well, uh, consider me your partner, right? Discuss. Down here, Oop. turn the inspector back on. Discuss. And let me, yeah, discuss. Come on, man. Inspector tool back on. All right, discuss. Down on line 12 in our workspace, we can see the code is another H2 tag. Creating this discuss header, same size as the inspector tool. Same size as this is a web page. All H2 tags. And then down here, we have another paragraph tag, which is saying, with a friend, discuss the following questions. And then we've got a unordered list down here. And our unordered list looks like this. And we'll be learning all of this code in separate lessons as we wake our way through this whole unit on HTML. By the time you are done with this unit, you will have created your own personal web page using the code that we're learning throughout the unit. And so making a list unordered means that it's got the bullet points instead of having uh, numbers, right? If you did an ordered list with an OL instead of the UL, it would be one and two instead of two bullets. What text is appearing in both the code and the web page, right? And you know that because it's the text that exists between the tags. And then how is this language communicating extra information about the way to represent text? Well, we've got extra information in the size of uh, the text that we have on the page, right? Here's an H1 tag, it's the biggest text. Here's an H2 tag, it's a slightly smaller text. And then these paragraph tags are just regular size text. Let's finish and let's move on to the next bubble, bubble five. <laughs> In this video, you're going to learn about using HTML to add structure to your web pages. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is found on all websites across the internet. There are a bunch of different HTML structures you can use on your web page, including headers, lists, paragraphs, links, and images. Let's take a look at how to create paragraph in HTML. The sentence we wrote for our web page would look better if it was distinctly different from the title of the web page. To separate the two, you need to let the computer know that all of this text is a part of a paragraph and not the title. You can do this by creating a paragraph element. Most elements are made up of three main parts, an opening tag, the contents to be displayed, and a closing tag. Tags are a part of HTML language and they signal to the computer the start and end of an element. In this case, it's a paragraph. Tags let the computer know what we want to display on the screen and what we don't want to display. That's why tags include special characters like the less than and greater than to distinguish from the content. Paragraphs are just one type of structure you can use in a web page. Soon you'll learn about a number of other structures that will give you even more power to customize your website. Very good, very good. All right, let's click continue and that will send us to bubble six. On bubble six, right, uh, before we, I read what's up there in the instructions, let's read this icon here. This icon means that this level is part of a larger project. Changes will be saved across these levels. So paying attention there, and if you highlight it, it says the same thing, right? So let's click the X. Boop. Gonzo. All right. Add text to the body. When you start any web lab project, it will automatically add the doc type, HTML, head, and body tags to your project. When you add content to your projects, you'll need to do it between the body and in body tags because it should be part of the body of your web page. Makes sense? Yeah, Mr. Decker, it makes sense. Very good, kids. Okay, do this. 
Write three separate sentences about any topic you like inside of the body tags of your web page. Hit refresh and save if you don't see the changes to the preview area. Compare your work with a neighbor. Well, we won't be able to, but make sure you're placing code in the same place. But compare your work with mine, right? Because we're doing this at the same time. All right, so my the content or the body, right? Remember, between the body tags. Don't type down here, no. Don't type up here. Don't erase any of this stuff. Typing beginning on line six of your code. Pay attention to the line numbers over here because that's going to be helpful when you're following along with what I'm doing. All right, write three separate sentences about any topic you like inside of the body tags of your web page. So I'm going to type again, I love computer science. Enter down with my enter key on my keyboard. On this line, I'm going to type, um, I think technology is cool. And then on my next line, after entering down, I'm going to type, I love all of my students. You can type what you want there. Just keep it clean, right? And then over here, in case you don't see what you've typed, hit that refresh and save, and you should be able to see everything you typed. Now, like she said in the video, Everything is just jumbled onto one line. That's not what I want. I want everything to be on separate lines, but let's keep going. Use paragraph tags. The open paragraph and closed paragraph tags, right? The open paragraph and the closed paragraph tags, or paragraph start and end tags, are placed around text to indicate that it is part of a paragraph. Placing text between paragraph start and end tags lets the computer know that it should be treated differently, often just placing it out from other text. Do this. Place the text you just wrote inside at least two paragraphs by surrounding it with the start paragraph and end paragraph tags. Compare the results with a neighbor, so compare your results to mine, what has changed about the way your text is displayed? Okay, so let's do this. On line six, let's create our start paragraph. And then at the end of that, we're gonna do the end paragraph. And you've got to hold down your shift key to make that happen. See? Now, over here instantly, we see that I love computer science is on its own line. And since these other two lines on seven and eight, these other two sentences don't have their own uh, start paragraph and end paragraph tags, they're just showing up bundled, jumbled together still. So let's go ahead and do paragraph tags for those. And we are working here, getting these paragraph tags in, and there we go. Now all three of my line, my sentences are on separate lines over on my website. And again, if it doesn't work the way you want it to, refresh and save. Now I'm going to turn my inspector on. So you can see on line six, my paragraph tag around I love computer science is working. My paragraph tag around I think technology is cool is working and my on line seven and on line eight, my I love all of my students paragraph tag is working for that sentence. Putting everything on separate lines. Sweet action. All right. Let's finish. And we're on the next bubble, bubble eight. Oh wait. Back to bubble seven, it's working. What did it say? I said finish. There it goes, now it's purple. All right, debug, fix the broken tags. This simple web page has some issues which are preventing the content from being displayed correctly. Identify and fix the issues. 
This practice is also called debugging your code. Do this. Fix the broken code so that the web page displays correctly. And then compare the problems you fixed with a neighbor, me being your neighbor in this instance. All right, so let's look down here. We're going to do some debugging. Let's turn the inspector tool on. So we can see on line six and seven, we want those lines to be separated because it says this sentence should be on its own. To make it be on its own, let's do our end paragraph tag. So shift key. And then when you're looking for this key on your keyboard, it's next to your M. And let me make sure on your Chromebook, you're looking at the same thing as I am. Let me open up my Chromebook to look and yes. All right, your shift key is down on the bottom left-hand side of your keyboard. The uh, greater than and less than symbols are on uh, kind of the right-hand side of your keyboard next to the letter M on the bottom row of letters on your keyboard. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, hit the less than symbol, and then I hit the slash key, which is very close to it, right next to your uh, shift key that's on the right-hand side of your keyboard, and then my P, and then the greater than symbol by holding down shift and hitting that key. And then I'm going to refresh and save. Puts that on its own line. And now on line seven, I've got an error here, and I can tell because of this pink code right here. Right? It's pink there and pink here. Now, the problem on this line, on line seven, is that we have an end paragraph, but no start paragraph. So let's put the start paragraph. Refresh and save. And now it looks like it's debugged, but what's wrong with line nine here? Well, line nine is messed up because right here on line eight, that, parag that start paragraph tag was messed up. I took the slash out of it. There was a slash there, so take that out. And then click over here at the end of line eight. In the end paragraph tag, it doesn't have the slash. So let's get that slash in there. Refresh and save. No errors. We've successfully debugged it. So let's finish right there. Click the finish here. That will make your bubble eight green. And then the next lesson will be lesson three on learning how to do the different styles of headings, different sizes, that is. But that's it for this video. I hope you had a good time with this lesson. I hope you learned a lot. You basically learned how to debug a little bit. You learned how to explore and navigate WebLab on code.org. And you learned how to do the paragraph tags. That's pretty cool. All right. That's it, guys. On to the next lesson.